Good morning. Uh, I'm Rear Admiral Doug Verissimo, Commander of Carrier Strike Group 9. We are absolutely thrilled to be back in San Diego. Thank you all for taking the time to be here. The men and women across the strike group have been operating with incredible poise professionalism throughout this deployment. TR Strike Group ships returning this week to San Diego, operating in the Indo-Pacific, fostering freedom of navigation and commerce in some of the world's most contested waterways. While USS Theodore Roosevelt arrived this morning along with USS Bunker Hill and USS Russell yesterday, four of our strike group ships that departed with us in January, including the USS Kidd, Paul Hamilton, Pinckney, and Rafael Peralta, continue to stand the watch in 4th, 5th, and 7th fleets. And our returning assets to San Diego this week remain postured to respond should we be called upon. I would like now to introduce the gentleman standing next to me, Captain Carlos Sardiello, the commanding officer of the USS Theodore Roosevelt. Good morning, everyone. As Admiral Verissimo stated, I'm Captain Carlos Sardiello, commanding officer USS Theodore Roosevelt. I echo the Admiral's remarks and thank you for being here today to greet us. The Theodore Roosevelt crew returned today to San Diego following a challenge to the Indo-Pacific. The Rough Riders served with pride, professionalism, and honored during the last six months. And the crew are at home to enjoy some downtime and visit with family and friends. The crew executed a wide range of missions from conducting dual carrier ops to expeditionary strike force operations, air defense and joint exercises, interoperability exercises, highlighting the United States' ability to rapidly aggregate and deploy combat forces. Over the last 35 days, the crew has disinfected and cleaned the ship three times a day, were screened, for influenza-like illness symptoms, and we returned to San Diego this morning with zero cases of COVID among the crew, embarked Air Wing, and the staffs. As you all are well aware, this deployment presented unprecedented challenges, and I'm incredibly proud of the Rough Rider team for their tenacity and fortitude. And with that, I'll turn it over to the public affairs officer to start the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Admiral. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open it up for questions. Again, the Admiral and the Captain are prepared to speak about deployment and our homecoming. Um, for the first question, uh, San Diego Union Tribune. Oh, go, go ahead, ma'am. So the question it was about uh, concerns of the sailors coming back to the community with uh, with COVID ongoing in the community. Did I understand your question correctly? Uh, much like any of the other sailors in the San Diego area, we're going to take those same precautions, uh, wearing masks, uh, uh, screening sailors as they come on board, and several other uh, uh, formal instructions that we're give, we've given our sailors to stay safe and stay operationally capable uh, as we integrate back into the community. Does that answer your question? Okay, the uh, crew's morale is very high. It has been an un unprecedented and challenging situation which they were faced with. But uh, through teamwork and tenacity, they got right back on mission, recovered the ship, they recovered the crew, and morale was high. They were executing the mission out there for 35 days straight. They are very excited to be launching and recovering airplanes and working together. And uh, they didn't miss a beat. So I'm very proud of them, and obviously they're very excited to get off the ship now and go see their family and friends. 
So the morale is solid. Uh, we gave them the tools that they needed. We fought through this and recovered. Uh, they're rough riders. So uh, the question was, how do I feel having served with Brett Crozier? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't speak to that. I, I checked into the command uh, on June 4th, uh, or actually I checked in, uh, yeah, I checked in on June 3rd and then took command of the strike group on June 10th. Uh, so uh, I would just refer you to the uh, investigation conducted by the CNO's office and uh, can refer any questions regarding uh, uh, specifics on that. May I follow up? Yes, sir. I, I Absolutely. You were with the strike group. You were, you came later. Yes, that's correct. What were the circumstances of the admiral with the strike group not being, uh, not seeing it through the deployment? So uh, changes of command and changes of office occur uh, on schedule, and I was scheduled all the way back uh, to early February uh, to have a change of command between the fourth and the tenth of June. So that went off as scheduled. Uh, at the uh, location, uh, actually at Guam is, is what the original location was, so nothing really changed there. Thank you. Yes, sir. So obviously, uh, the world is facing uh, the COVID together. It's never happened before. Uh, it's a scary thing. The biggest thing was to give clear and concise guidance and direction on what we were doing and then make sure that we were socially connected. We used innovative methods like everyone around the world, uh, remote applications, uh, social networking tools, closed, uh, we had a closed Facebook page that we uh, applied the ability to share information, to share our concerns and to show support for each other. And then to the limitations of the restrictions that we had on board, we started applying things where we could do physical fitness with uh, social distancing and uh, morale events on board. You know, bingo night the other night. Uh, we did uh, a lot of TV shows. I did a lot of taping in, in private and we would stream that for the crew. So really the bottom line is staying connected just like the, the families are doing back home to show each other support because uh, this is a tough time. The question was, are there any lessons learned from this event um, for leadership, most especially the commanding officer of the ship? I'll speak uh, to the leadership uh, portion of the question. Uh, when we speak historically, when you're in the middle of a, a battle with a global pandemic, it's, it's very difficult to speak historically. I can say uh, personally I've learned uh, it's always a great time to build consensus and understand what the foe may bring. But with an unknown foe and a, a, an unknown uh, future, it's really important to lead concisely and uh, lead strongly uh, and emphasize what you, your goals and your outcomes uh, that you desire should be. 
and I'd like to just add too on the morale because I come in a unique uh, as a unique fixture that I showed up just as the ship was coming together again, COVID free. Uh, I can tell you the sailors were remarkably happy to be back with their shipmates. Uh, being on board ship on deployment is tough, uh, but our sailors were happy across the strike group to have everyone together as a team again, uh, able to fight and able to perform. So uh, as far as lessons learned, I would offer that what is being done in society with the masks, the social distancing, and the cleaning, uh, those measures absolutely work. We have a very constrained environment on board the ship, and in execution of those, uh, from application, you know, it's a wait and see with COVID. Is it going to develop or not? And it didn't. We absolutely stopped it in its tracks. Another thing that we learned, there are some efficiencies that we can take. For instance, we applied uh, telemedicine, teledentistry, where folks were not coming down to medical. And we were taking care of a lot of cases of other stuff, scraped knees and, uh, and minor things. So that introduced some efficiencies. And there are other areas around the ship where we see the, an opportunity to change the way we do business, uh, leveraging the situation. So that, that's a big lesson learned for us. Well, I, I can't really uh, comment on the situation other than all the uh, carrier COs and the Navy nuclear years of experience. We do our best to take care of the mission and take care of the crew. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, Captain Crozier is a friend. Uh, still. Well, we have time for another one more question. Uh, Uh, the, the question was, what have we learned on board uh, Theodore Roosevelt and the Theodore Roosevelt Strike Group uh, about the coronavirus and uh, how we might help or uh, influence uh, the, the local communities and how we protect our sailors? Is that uh, about right uh, with your question? So clearly uh, for the Navy, and I'll speak for the Navy only, we are learning uh, and have learned a ton. Uh, and uh, I think the sailors on board TR have gone above and beyond in making themselves available for, uh, whether you use the word study or investigation of uh, the effects of COVID and antibodies to COVID and how the uh, human body reacts and, and adapts uh, in the current environment. Uh, I think we have a very young and resilient crew uh, we have uh, been very clear with our crew and communicating uh, that although the virus doesn't hasn't seemed to really impact them very diff with difficult circumstances, we have uh, people that are much more susceptible to the virus uh, with our family members and uh, with our local community. So we've talked and trained quite a bit so that we perform correctly with our community and that we uh, take the measures we've learned on board the TR to minimize and eliminate the spread of COVID. And if we do uh, have an exposure, we've got a very specific plan uh, to try to combat that virus if it were to take hold again. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, sir. Thank you, Admiral. Thank you everyone for coming out. That's all the questions we have time for as we want to start getting some of the sailors off the ship. Um, we do have one sailor that is available to come and um, answer questions uh, from the crew perspective. So if you could just stand by while the Admiral and the Captain depart, um, I can bring AC1 right up to the, the microphone to, to answer any questions.
first name is Daniel. Daniel, that's the answer. What's your rank, please? Uh, AC1, aircraft controller, first class. You can do that over here. Um, go ahead and fade into the mic just so yeah. they have the feed. Got it. Um, you can say your first and last name and then what your job title is on board the ship. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Air Traffic Controller First Class Daniel Adam Wright. You gotta be loud. Will right, do. One more time. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Air Traffic Controller First Class Daniel Adam Wright. I've been on board the Theodore Roosevelt for the past three years. Excellent. Daniel, um, did you have COVID 19? Uh, I never tested positive for COVID 19, no. What was the environment like on the ship when a lot of your crewmates were sick? Uh, we did a really good job in identifying the problems early and quarantining those sailors that were tested positive for the coronavirus. Uh, it was an interesting change watching the dynamics as we adjusted to living with this disease. And I think that the ship did a great job putting sailors in the right positions so that the contamination and the spread of the disease did not continue to persist. So I have seen sailors, sailors that worked directly with me that did test positive. Some of the common symptoms that I saw them come down with was a loss of their uh, smell and a loss of their sense of taste. Uh, since then, they've all been tested uh, again. And as we left Guam, uh, the ship was COVID free and we've been living in our own protective bubble for the past uh, 35 days roughly, where everyone on the ship has been continuing to go through our COVID mitigation plans which includes extensive cleaning procedures and uh, bleaching down of the ship's common spaces. And any uh, daily temperature checks or influenza-like illnesses are documented and tracked by the departments. I have a question. How did you feel about the leadership of Captain Crozier? How did you feel about him? Uh, Captain Crozier uh, was the CEO when I left on this uh, deployment. Uh, I have nothing but great things to say about his leadership bringing us to this point and bringing us into Guam. I am grateful for everything that he did for the crew and for the ship. Uh, and for getting us the assistance that we needed uh, when it was discovered that the coronavirus was out of uh, our hands and required further assistance. Uh, sir, if I could say anything to you, it would be thank you. Thank you for noticing a problem uh, on board the ship and a problem that was affecting your crew. And thank you for taking the actions necessary to get us the assistance required. So we had been briefed before that this would be a homecoming, unlike other ones that we'd experienced on previous deployments. Uh, as I myself manned the rails up on the tower uh, of the ship, it was a sombering feeling seeing that we didn't have our families out here after we'd been gone for so long. Any other questions? Thank you so much, AC1. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.